am not feeling it today. I'm very tired. I've currently started my period. And so it's that like first day of just wanting to actually curl in on myself. So I'm gonna match the vibe and allow myself to just chill the freak out. You know what I'm saying? I did a This is what I worked on. I am going to be releasing a new collection of pieces here in a couple days. My goal right now is to upload work about once a month. I'm doing it on the full moon. It's just a way for me to like be disciplined and actually do the thing that I need to do in order to make money. And it's been good so far. This is the third one. The second one was the hardest one for me to actually follow through on. But now it's kind of getting to the point where like if I don't do it once a month, I have too much work to actually upload and it becomes very overwhelming. And this is what I have. I engraved these triangular checkerboard earrings that'll be available those three rings and these really simple pendants i'm gonna do it where it's just a pendant for sale and then you can buy a chain if you want and then i finished these i actually had made all of these but these two and released them already on the internet but i decided to use the back of them to engrave on so this is the first one that i did it's really simple nice channeled the design, made something kind of interesting to adorn this, and then I engraved the lines around it too. Just a way to practice and add something special to the back of the piece. This is the second one that I did. It's a bright cut. In the sunlight, it's like little diamonds, and then it's recycled 14 karat gold snake and sterling silver, like backing and stuff. 14 karat gold bale too. This is the third one that I did. Fire opal and brass sterling silver for everything else channeled this design kind of a floral woodlandy inspired theme the spiral i fabricated on there originally i like the symbolism of the spiral and then these two are new that i finished while i was here in colorado i set the stones in arizona but i finished everything else engraved kind of a mandala on this one I've been really enjoying drawing mandalas, so I figured they had to transfer into the metal somehow. And then this is my most recent one. I mean, I think that looks pretty incredible. You can kind of see how my skills developed throughout the each one. Yeah, I'm still very much new in my engraving journey, but I'm having fun. Oh yeah, this one too. I haven't showed really anybody this other than my family. This is a Zippo lighter. I did the Sacred Heart first. And then I did this one, this side second, like several weeks later. And it's interesting to see how much my skills have developed from just a couple weeks. Like starting this one and then finishing with this just a few weeks later. And then I did this checkerboard detail around the side and signed my name. It's a legit Zippo too, so you can replace all the guts or anything, like if something happens to it. I'm gonna go rest for a little while. I still have to edit about half of the photos for these pieces, and I'm gonna spend the next couple days uploading everything to the actual website and getting all the product listings sorted out. Today I don't feel very good, and I don't wanna do this anymore. I feel like I've done enough, so I'm gonna be done. <laughs> I'm not feeling like amazing today. I'm tired again, in pain, my body purging, a wasted attempt at life from my uterus. And I'm just once again thinking that it would be so nice to have like a camp or a spa to go to for like the first few days of my period where I just get to sit in the hot springs and get a massage and like smoke whatever amount of weed I want and have the softest coziest blanket and like no pressure to work because I'm about to take photos right now for a shop update on Friday and I'm mad about it it's not gonna be that big of a deal but fuck I don't want to do it <laughs> it needs to get done though
again here on the beanbag chair in the pool room with the animals. Welcome back. If you're seeing this, it means you made it. You're alive. Good job. I'm filming these as like week in the lives, you know, just to get started, to get used to filming things, to begin getting comfortable with viewing myself. I talked about this in last week's video about just being visible and the fear of being visible and how I am planning on working on my fear of visibility so that I can become visible by you guys and by the world because I have stuff to say, I have art to share with the world and hiding it in a box and hiding myself away is just no longer working for me. I want to actually be a part of a collective. I wanna be a part of a community. I want to actually interact with the people and being a hermit all the time and being in hermit mode all the time, it just, it, it had its purpose in my life for a period of time when I was very much in a cocoon healing. And now I'm kind of out of that cocoon. My wings have dried off. I'm ready to take flight. I have had a hard time finding the courage to actually fly to a new garden. Through exposing myself to uncomfortable things, I am expanding myself and forcing myself to grow and get comfortable with new things. It's interesting as I soften into this idea of flow and like allowing my life to flow finding the flow of life in my creativity in the way that i interact with people interact with my energy interact with other people's energies and like just the happenings of life i notice where i had created knots or created blocks or found that i was trying to go through a solid wall when the door was like six feet to the left and i had that happen this morning in my morning pages i realized that sitting down and filming little bits of talking videos like this for like a youtube channel with intentionally formatted and intentioned for youtube it feels good it feels easy sitting down and doing this over the last couple weeks and like allowing myself to edit the footage allowing myself to film when i even feel kind of cringe doing that like doing those little things feels way better than like sitting down and filming a TikTok video. And I had this idea that I would somehow manage to do both. I'd be TikTok famous and people would follow me for my lifestyle content and my jewelry content and my art content and my cat content and my life content, like just all of it. I thought like, okay, cool. I'm going to be like Victoria Paris, but if she was like a cool silversmith artist who had really cool things to offer. And then I realized like, I'm actually not Victoria Paris. I'm, I talk about her so much because I find a lot of inspiration in her videos. I like, I just like her and like the, what she does. And it's so cool how every time she shows up, her life just gets even more surreal. And it's kind of amazing. I like the idea of that, but I want to do it in my own way. There's not like one mold that I have to fill to be successful on the internet. I just have to do me and show you me and as it unfolds through the weeks and months and years we'll have something really cool going on i keep hearing this voice it's like i feel like i can't i feel like i can't i feel like i can't and it i feel it in my solar plexus when i say that in week five of the artist's way which is the week i'm currently on it's the part of the reading that really stuck with me is about like why we doubt God. Because honestly, the whole thing of the artist's way is reconnecting to like the spiritual birthright you have to creating anything and like finding your inner creative and becoming unblocked. And I love it because it's so approachable for everybody. It's like under the premise that we are all creative beings in our own way. Just some of us have been disconnected from that. Part of it is uncovering those unconscious beliefs about what it means to be a creative person. With God, the creator, the source of all things, really like the creator created us to create. I find that the word God with the capital G feels so like oppressive to me. I think because it is in context to the institutional church. I feel like the fundies are gonna come find me and kill me. Burn the witch, you know what they say. I know this sounds crazy to some, but I really do believe that in a past life, like my magic got me hurt or it's more like ancestral. I feel like I can't tell the difference between past life and ancestors. 
like I feel this deep fear around truly unleashing my magic. Wanting to preface all of this with my opinions are my opinions. The way that I see the world is the way I see the world. And I don't expect, nor do I want you to see the world the same way I do. There might be things that I say that you resonate with. Maybe you agree with everything I say in this video. There will come a time when you won't agree with everything that I say. And I think that's okay and I think that's healthy and I think that it's acceptable and a really powerful practice within cultivating communities to recognize that you can resonate with somebody and not want to absorb every single thing that they have to say. I'm human, there's things that I'm still working on and working through with my relationship with God and the divine and society and growing up, all these things that I am expecting to grow and change. And so I have to be able to like ebb and flow through it from here to there to everywhere. In my journaling around allowing God to give me what I want, allowing myself and the creator to co-create this cool life, first of all, I internalized God too much. Second of all, Christian indoctrination and my anger and resentment about it. I think those are the main two things. Through my spiritual awakening, I realized that I had this God force within me. I had only ever felt the presence of the divine through internal experiences. I've begun to see the magic of the world around me, but like, like mystical shit was happening in my mind through like EMDR, honestly, I can talk about that and like my mystical experiences with EMDR, EMDR if anybody wants to know. Like this internal knowing that like we are all gods. We are all little pieces of the creator walking around creating life and creating experience and creating things around us. Like our species, if you take peel away the spiritual layers and you just look at like the wild animals of homo, homo sapiens, we are apes living in the world we're really smart and we've built a society like everything that around us was built by a bunch of freaking monkeys but we have this divinity to us we understand the spirit world we understand death we understand something outside of us or for a lot of us within us and outside of us is what i'm really beginning to realize is like it's like seeing things through a limited perspective so like the creator exists as like the whole the all of it, it exists within us and it, it exists without outside of us and where outside of us is is like a lot more space like imagine we're like a three-dimensional triangle you know that's the perspective that we have within this world is like a pyramid like that's like we're three-dimensional beings who kind of have understanding of like fourth and fifth and but that's more through like emotion and like these non-physical things like in the physical reality we are very much like a pyramid whereas like god would be everything else and i'm seeing it as this like big 12 sided like dice basically but like pointy i don't know like if the on the flat edges of the dice were all like pointed up instead of flat and cut off where it exists is this like thing that is so much bigger than us and so much more complex than us that it has a perspective that we cannot possibly have within our physical vessels like our physical vessels are a limitation our physical vessels are the lens through which we perceive this physical reality and like life on earth and when we remember that we are the creators i've noticed at least in the west because it's like literally the only perspective that i have when we internalize our God too much, it makes us forget how much space there is between us and the rest of us. Our physical selves and our like divine selves and the God creator part of us that exists outside of our physical beings. And our ego is what gets in the way and makes it like, yeah, of course I'm God. Like I'm so powerful, I manifest and create the world around me. And like, yes, but there's that un known element there's the unknown element because of the parts that we can't see because of our limited perspective where we have to just trust in ourselves and in the creator around like within us to be able to trust the creator around us to know that it's all going to work out that 
the unknown part is where the fun comes in and where that like movie kind of thing comes in like Jessa Reed talks about this a lot is like our lives are like movies and when we're praying and manifesting and doing the rituals and like doing the mindset stuff and honestly even taking action we're kind of like sending into some kind of like writing agency like what we want the story to kind of look like and then they god creator source the thing around us the parts that we can't perceive start to like write that story and play it out in our physical reality personally what i see is like reality creation as opposed to like life happening to you like my issue too with like dogmatic christian kind of thinking and like being indoctrinated into that religion is that it's only like a perspective it's only like this much of the puzzle you know and even like the whole thing that i described as the way that i feel and see god and like reality is again only like this much of the puzzle it's just like over here like christianity's here i'm kind of like over here i can't be too far off because i'm still working within the frame of reference of what i know and like different religions of earth are kind of like just floating around this and then there's like kind of a central point that everything's like floating around some are like kind of more over here some are like more like interlapping you know it's like every different religion is just a different perspective of the creator in my home we didn't have a lot of that religious indoctrination there was a lot of room there was a lot of disassociation happening on all parts within the family unit at my home and we were not really being paid attention to that closely and church was not something that was like very rigid or strict like the presence of god was not really there there was kind of a lot of abuse happening like there wasn't really a god presence within my home so we would go to church but it was never really that big of a deal it was more like the cultural social things around living in a really fundamentalist town growing up in that really jaded my view of christianity and of god and i've had to go through a whole like deconstruction as a result as i really grew up and developed i realized like my own relationship with it and like what my own beliefs were and i just realized like i'm just like not really a christian i don't i don't understand the whole jesus thing i just personally don't understand it so it's like okay that's just not for me and i've come to accept that in my 20s but i held a lot of anger and resentment for it and just like seeing the way that it has turned into an institution now that is so far from the core values of the actual religion that it's just sad i don't know and all of that like resentment and that just kind of anger and animosity towards the religion has jaded my even understanding of god and i've had to like reassess what that looks like and i'm still reassessing what that looks like because even just like writing out the capital god makes me super uncomfortable and it makes me feel like fuck you dad <laughs> like sky daddy fuck you sky daddy for being oppressive and killing people and whatever and convincing the world that you're the best it's the part that like pisses me off also the evangelism but anyway and i just like have had a hard time allowing myself to even have a relationship with that thinking like okay if it's within me then it's something different if it's within me then that's better somehow because it's just something different like it's just a way that i was relating to this creator i felt within me and trying to like have a relationship with it and i think as i develop even more too i realize that when i internalize god too much and i see myself as the creator and not the co-creator i'm limiting myself because my vision of the world is still pretty small like i said like i only have this much understanding of the world when there's all the space around it that i can't see and perceive because of my physical being like i need to give the parts of me that the parts of the creator that is beyond my ego and my my physical self a little more faith you know i don't know why it feels so uncomfortable i think it's like an expanding that i'm not familiar with and i don't know what it's gonna feel like i don't want to get like high on jesus you know what i'm saying like those new those newly spiritual people 
they were like insufferable it doesn't matter if it's like fresh christians or people who just crack their egg for like new age spirituality it's a little bit hard to look at when you've gone when you're on the other side of it it's awesome seeing the magic in the world around you i honestly kind of like talk shit because i miss it i still see the magic but i just also realize like being a human and experiencing this life is like what we're supposed to be doing that's it loving is a big part of it it makes life a lot more enjoyable gratitude makes life a lot more enjoyable it's like doing what feels good following your desires trusting that this creator that is outside of us has the ability to help our dreams come true bigger than we even imagine that's the part that's like really hidden for me is like I can only imagine things so much within a certain context of my own experiences and like what I've witnessed like there's so much beyond that that we could attain if we stop trying to control every little element of this experience and it's like we're really just supposed to experience and vibe and like get to know ourselves and get to know the people in the world around us and like enjoy it and have fun i keep messing with my hair i didn't get all the conditioner out today it feels really weird so i'm like trying to fluff it out but i think i'm gonna end up actually weighing it down and making it greasy this is a nice haircut it's actually not as bad now that it's middle parted but this is like grow out from february my hair was up to here in february so considering that this is seven months of grow out that's not bad I need to get it cut really bad and I'm going to when I get back to Phoenix because right now I'm at my in-laws house. I've been here for two months. We leave in a couple weeks. So when I get back to Phoenix, I will be getting it reshaped. When I envision my higher self, I see her with really long, like natural brown hair. And so that's what we're doing. It's not boring to have really healthy long hair. It's actually really pretty. So. It can be simple, it can be easy, and look really good. And that's kind of what I'm going for. I'm gonna go do something else for a while. I did not start my day out Gary's way. I did not start my day out at Gary's way. I started my day by getting on TikTok. Oh, what a mistake that was because my brain feels like scrambled eggs. I suffered through my morning pages today. I had a lot to say. I just was ADHD brain as fuck. Just constantly looking at my phone thinking, wow, 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 what's more to see? I also woke up thinking about a problem that I'm having with a sweater that I'm currently knitting. I'm thinking that the issue is gonna work itself out in blocking. I'm hoping that the issue is gonna work itself out in blocking. And I'm like kind of stressed about it because I've already started it over once and I don't want to do it again. Uh, so that's how I feel about that. And that's kind of how I feel inside. And I really need to eat something and drink a little caffeine and smash out a blog post and a newsletter. Listen, I feel like I'm crawling out of my skin a little bit. It's just like I started my day off with social media and then slowly devolved into madness. I've had a protein shake. I'm still hungry as shit. I'm about to go to a coffee shop. I'm gonna get some food there. I gotta hustle because the coffee shop I'm going to stop serving food at noon because why would you serve lunch? Anyway, I like their coffee enough that I'm gonna go there and I'm not gonna complain because I'm gonna get there early enough to get a freaking breakfast sandwich and I'm gonna eat it and I'm gonna type a blog out and I'm gonna finish some content and then, and then, and then I'm gonna go to the dispensary because I want to, because I can. And then, and then, and then I'm gonna come home and I'm gonna engrave. I need to get out of this house. I've been in this house for too many hours in a row.
He's going to tell me he's hungry. His feeder's empty, but I know it went off this morning. <sighs> he's mad because I lessened his food. When I came to Colorado, I had two cats. Macaroni had gotten sick before we even left for Colorado. And we had taken her to the vet. We got all the tests done. Everything came back negative. We came to Colorado, got some antibiotics because we were thinking like, we just got to try. We got to see if my vet missed something. Macaroni lost a ton of weight, disappeared about three weeks ago. Have seen no sign of her since then. I think she's no longer of this physical realm. So, Mr. Cheese is currently alone. I'm sad for him, but he's healthy. He's happy. He's loving life as a barn cat for right now. And I have his automatic feeder here so that I don't have to come down here three times a day to feed him. So he's happy. We can go do rodeo shit and he's like taken care of. And I lessened the food because there's raccoons around. There's another stray cat we saw on the camera around. And the last thing I want to do is feed the riffraff. So he's mad because he doesn't have an overabundance of food. Ew, I think that's avocado. <laughs> he's mad because he doesn't have an abundance of food, but he's okay. He's living in a barn. He gets kibble and I bet he gets mice. He says, mom, you know I don't hunt, I'm lazy. It's true, he's the laziest cat I've ever known. Yes, he's so lazy, but I love him. I love this cat more than I love myself. No, well, that might be pushing it, but there was once a time when I loved this cat more than I loved myself. Well, that was week five of The Artist's Way. That was really it for this week. Um, truthfully, I, <laughs> I'm i recording this outro like two weeks later. I'm currently on week seven. I just did week seven reading for The Artist's Way, and I edited all of the footage for this video yesterday. And it's interesting because just through doing this work and through doing the artist way and doing my morning pages and just having a lot of time dedicated towards contemplating, things are moving really fast and I'm processing things really fast. I've always been a really fast processor, but it just feels like it's at lightning speed. And it's very visible how I'm like really uncomfortable talking about my idea of God because at this point I hadn't done some of the essays from week five of the artist way. Pretty much every week there's like a list of essays that you do to excavate through your subconscious and kind of figure out what you believe in and what you want to believe in and work towards being a more aligned creator and creative being. One of the exercises was what is your relationship with God and what would you like your relationship with God to be like? Like what would you like God to be in your cinematic universe so to speak? And truthfully, I mentioned this a little bit and I edited out so much because I really ranted about my <laughs> religious trauma. I grew up in a really fundamentalist town, Lynchburg, Virginia, where just God was really oppressive and the people really supported that. And it didn't really fit my idea of who God was. So I just kind of abandoned the idea of God at all and kind of was more agnostic in belief, didn't really have like that feeling within myself that God was exactly real and all expansive and wanted to give me what I wanted. And through my spiritual awakening, I was able to feel God within myself. But part of internalizing God too much is that you really are only able to experience the God within yourself as much as you really experience yourself where I feel like I am limited in my own belief of myself so therefore I was limiting my belief of God and I really do believe that the creator of all things the source of the entire universe um, doesn't really care about a lot of those dogmatic beliefs that kind of are rigid and structured within like Christianity and for some people maybe that helps them feel connected to God to like devote themselves and take physical action in a certain way and I certainly don't think that the entire religion is to be written off. I think that that's a little intense and kind of leads to black and white thinking which is dangerous in and of itself but just for me like realizing that I was, I had a very limited view of God because I thought that you had to look and be a certain way. And because I didn't fit that bill, I 
you know, didn't, I didn't get access to God. And then kind of realizing that God exists outside of religion helped me to see, okay, there's more possibilities. There's something else. There's a different perspective I can have in this conversation, but not really defining that for myself. And that's, I think, like where I limit myself in a lot of ways is not defining exactly what I want, who my target clients are, who God is, and having a clear vision for this kind of stuff. So throughout pretty much week six, I feel like I, like the week of these, like the artist way that I'm working on, it's like the next week that stuff really starts to click because the first week is just a lot of like taking it in and soaking in the information and like allowing myself to be uncomfortable. And then through living in like, what if God was expansive and did want to help me and was something that I could access the next week was when it's like, okay, let's put that into practice. And really sitting down and defining like who I think God is, is this like all expansive being who loves every single molecule of existence, who is within every single molecule of existence and wants to help you create the life that you want to live. And all things are possible, the good and the bad. If you believe it, it will be. And kind of settling into this realization that I can develop a deeper relationship with the source of all things. And it's still really uncomfortable. It's still something that I'm like having a hard time really wrapping my head around and really feeling in its entirety. I can feel my ego holding on for dear life, wanting to be like, no, I created this. And it didn't like, <laughs> it's really not, it's really not correct of me. It's really not helpful for me to think that I am this like all expansive creator within just me, myself. There's a lot of space around me where God exists that I can't see. And that's where the mystery is. That's where that unknown element is. That's where that like kind of faith has to be of like, I can't see the part of the creator that is on my side. I can't see what is conspiring. I can't see what doors are being unlocked right now. But it's not my job to see that. It's my job to pay attention to what is directly in front of me. And that's where like presence really comes in and like the be here now and really being satisfied in your day to day life. And through kind of contemplating God and what God is, I really started to see satisfaction and understand satisfaction and the way that I think that in my upbringing, there was such a spirit of lack mindset that nothing was ever good enough. I just noticed that the women in my family have this general attitude of not enough. And it's not a character judgment because I find it within myself too. And it might not even just be the women, you know. I think that it's something that kind of plagues a lot of women. And that might just be a societal thing as well. But just this feeling of dissatisfaction. There's always going to be something to complain about. There's always going to be something to be unhappy about. And this like general sense and air of dissatisfaction that I've noticed. And it kind of would make me mad and to see like, well, I did all these things and yet there's still something that is being complained about that you're complaining about, like whatever. And realizing, oh, I do that too. I'm finding myself being like, okay, I finally, I had been manifesting a move for like a year. I moved and then all of a sudden I'm like, well, this isn't good enough. I need to make all these changes to the house. We need to paint the walls. We need to get new furniture. We need to move this stuff around. If this space was only like this, then I would be happy. And I'm like realizing that no matter what, no matter what happens, I end up back in that mindset and just questioning like, why am I always so unsatisfied? What is it that makes me feel like I need to pick apart everything about myself and the world around me to make it better? And part of it is perfectionism and the self-sabotage that is perfectionism and the way that perfectionism is like the physical manifestation of just really not feeling like you're good enough, which is kind of something that I've struggled with for a long time. And 
you know, growing up in a narcissistic household, I was never really allowed to develop a sense of self and I wasn't really able to do that until I was in my 20s. So my sense of self is still very new. If I don't cultivate a, a feeling of satisfaction in my day-to-day -day life, this is just going to be a cycle that I live with perpetually. So what would make me feel satisfied? And honestly, like through my morning pages practice, things come up of like, okay, I constantly am complaining about how I'm not exercising enough. Something that's been kind of sounding like fun is running. And you're going to see that in week six of The Artist's Way, I start running. Sabina a year ago would never have believed that I would be interested in running. Finding a practice for exercising every single day is really satisfying to me. And I'm still cultivating what like a satisfying day looks like, but doing things every day that I can be proud of creates a satisfying life. And when things need to change, they will. I am somebody who really values growth. I'm somebody who really values change. And that's going to always be there. But in the meantime, I can still be satisfied where I am and understand that like things will grow, things will change. I can get or do different things to cultivate that satisfaction. Oftentimes, the satisfaction does not come through the like physical things that I have around me. I think I really noticed this lack of satisfaction in how there's always something that I'm wanting. New pair of shoes, this new piece of furniture, this new piece of technology, I'm gonna save up. And when I get this, it's gonna be great. This is gonna help me do this thing that I feel like I can't do without it. And then I get the thing and I'm like, great, I'm happy. I don't need anything else. And then like a couple days later, I'm like, ah, this new thing. And it's like the consumerist consumption-based mindset that we have here in the West paired with this general feeling of dissatisfaction paired with this idea that these physical objects are going to make me happy. So there's an element of physical things that we do need to cultivate satisfaction, but like excess? No. And this idea of satisfaction, I think, is how I cultivate a relationship with God too, because through kind of contemplating like the kind of God I want to experience, in having a fulfilling, abundant, satisfying life has brought these things up. And I think that it's a lot about softening still. Like I'm still very much in my soft, softening era, soft girl era. And I stumble over this quite frequently because being soft and allowing things to flow is still really hard for me. I'm finding that I want to take action and make things work for me. But another realization that I had around this whole softening thing and like trusting my intuition and realizing that the intuition is the language of like my intuition is my internal language that I share with the creator. Getting out of my own head and realizing that as I cultivate these feelings of satisfaction and get more and more comfortable like being satisfied and finding contentment in my everyday life that the illuminated path gets a little more clearer. I just think that like if you want to live a truly abundant luxurious life, if you want to be in alignment with God and like receive the offerings that God wants to give you or the blessings that God wants to give you, it feels like satisfaction, at least for me, because like really there is no one thing that any of us should be doing. By purely existing and living every single day and experiencing the world around us, we are doing enough. There isn't more that we have to do and everything else is honestly societal standards. Like this idea that we need to be rich, this idea that we need to look a certain way, act a certain way, be a certain way, live a certain way, have a certain car, have a certain house. You know what I'm saying? Like all of these external pressures are society. It's not really like what you need to do to ascend to the next level of spiritual being. It's just like existing in your body and being in relationship with people around you and the world around you. And I think satisfaction is such a like indulgent, luxur luxurious part of being alive because it gives you permission to recognize that the world around you is enough and that God can provide you enough and what you need. And it just has felt like a major key to just enjoying my life. Like I would like to enjoy my life. And in order to enjoy my life, I would like to feel satisfied and have a feeling of satisfaction at the end of the day. And how do I cultivate that feeling for myself? It's not something that's just going to fall into my lap. I think that's where this like work aspect of being alive comes in. Like it takes work for me to put my running clothes on and go out there for 
an hour to do my workout. But at the end of it, I feel so good about myself and in my body. And I, you know, like I have that feeling of satisfaction. And it leads me to do more and more behaviors that cultivate that feeling of satisfaction, which at the end of the day is a very enjoyable feeling and helps me embody the kind of person that I want to be. And it's something that has to be cultivated. It's something that you have to actively take action to do, but I don't think it has to be something that is super hard. I think it's something that is in alignment with something you already want to do anyway. And giving yourself permission to do that and giving yourself permission to have an enjoyable life and realizing that like there is a version of the creator who wants to help you create that enjoyable life and it's going to come through action and other people. It's not very often that God just drops a bag of money into your lap without somebody exchanging that with you in some way. My relationship with God is still very much developing, but I think that's just going to develop through time and through practice. Thanks for watching this far. If you are interested in any of the jewelry that I talk about in this video, um, I don't have a sponsor for this video other than left-handed alchemy. You can find all the information for that in the description. If you want to buy some jewelry, um, certainly will not be upset about that right now. I'm offering 33% off of all Gaia studs, which I'm not wearing any, but they're these, maybe I'll insert a clip. They're these really cool stud hoop earrings that are perfect for every day, solid 9 to 5 sterling silver. I'm offering 33% off your order of Gaia studs with the code Gaia. So... If you do feel called to support, you can take a little monies off and get a really nice pair of everyday earrings. Anyway, thanks for watching. It's been real. It's been fun. I love you. I hope you have a good week.